the boys in the barracks wanted me to hypnotize the sergeant. Now, he was very reluctant first. And the first time we did it, he th threw his watch up against the wall, because that's what I had him looking at. And he said, I'm not going to be hypnotized, and destroyed his watch. So we bought him a new watch to keep his good graces. And then finally, he did consent to be hypnotized. And the whole company turned out to watch. And after I hypnotized a sergeant, I said, like I usually did, if you're hypnotized, raise your right hand. And I said, and the sergeant raised his right hand, and I turned around and said, okay, guys. And they all had their right hands raised. Over 200 men, and they all had their, I had hypnotized them all. They were watching it so intently that they went under. So what to do? I woke the sergeant up. And I said, okay, Sarge, tables are turned. What do you want to do? He says, I don't know. I said, how would you like to take him out for close order drill? I said, do the exhibition half-step drill. And he'd been trying to teach us this. And he said, I would love to. So I assembled everybody out on the grounds next to our barracks and told them that they were to obey the, the marching commands of the sergeant, that he was going to take them through the exhibition drills that we'd been uh, working with. And I sat in a chair and watched it all happen. And he started. Now they're very close together when you're marching half step. So you're almost really next to each other. And he ran through a few simple marching commands. And a crowd started to grow. And word spread. And pretty soon he's doing breaking the, the group up into blocks of four. Then he's breaking them up into triangular groups. And then he's doing diagonal marching spreading everything out in a diagonal, going in different directions, and then coming back into the body again. He's doing the exploding star. He's doing the exploding star reversed. And by that time, we have half the post of Fort Meade, Maryland, watching this, ex this marching exhibition. And it was astonishing. Now, after the hour was up, uh, I, I said to Sergeant, is that enough? And he says, yeah. So he brought everybody in a block in front of us, and I brought them out of the, out of the hypnosis on an eight count, like I always do. I stopped at, uh, uh, you start at one, and then you, you go up to the eight count. So I stopped at six and told them what had happened and what they were doing, and they would remember it, and they would feel very proud that they did so well. And then I continued and, and, and brought them totally out of it. The Sarge dismissed them. And thunderous applause from all the people that were watching. And there was a huge crowd. At golf on Wednesday with Andy, he said to me, Roger, aren't you in Company C? 2nd Battalion? I said, yes, I am. And he said, was that you hypnotizing your company? And I said, yes, it was, and it was awesome, Andy. You should have been there. He said, Roger, you don't know how my staff reacted. You scared the shit out of them. Pardon my French, Roger. You have them totally terrified. Here is an unknown enlisted man who can, at the, at the snap of his fingers, can control 200 men and make them do things that they couldn't do normally. 
I said, oh, I didn't realize that they'd get so upset. And he said, yeah, he said, they were really. He said, what should we do about it? And I said, well, why don't you write me a letter saying that I can't do any more uh, hypnosis on, on, the, on the base? He said, you, th that you agree to that? And I said, oh, sure, that's no problem. Guys are waking me up in the middle of the night asking me to hypnotize them and tell them their arm isn't working. You know, and so I just as soon get rid of all that responsibility. He said, "Fine, that's what we'll do then." And so he did. And I said, "He said I'll bring you the letter next Wednesday." So next Wednesday he brought me the letter, and I said, "Thank you very much, Andy." Now I have a problem. I hope you can help me solve. And he says, "Roger, I'll do the best I can. What can I do for you?" And I said. My squad is the ghost squad. He said, oh, really? They're your boys? And I said, yes, sir. And I said, there's talk at the graduation parade of not letting us march first. But traditionally, any squad that has the most ribbons gets to march first, because that's the honor. But my rag, my group is so ragtag. You know, I'm the only one that has a uniform that fits. When they march, it looks like they're going across a plowed field. So there's talk of not letting us march first. He says, "Well, that's true, Roger. There is talk about that." Now, did you train these men? And I said, "Well, it's like an orchestra." They already knew how to play. I just brought them together as a conductor. He said, well, you know, my staff has been trying to catch you guys in every field exercise that we've had, and you've made fools of them. I said, well, we just did the boo, you're dead. He said, that's enough. He said, they don't know how you communicate. They can't figure it out. He said, What's your, uh, how do you do it? And I told him about the, the, the battle formation and the Vs. And then I said, now Andy, we'd better sit down here. So we went over and we sat down. I said, because if your guys were upset at the hypno and marching, I said, they're going to go ballistic with this. <laughs>